Hey, what's up y'all? It's Don, and tonight we're going to the movies. But obviously not in the real world because, well, it's all shut down, including the cinemas. So, how are we going to go to the movies? We're going to do it the next best way, and that's in virtual reality. That's right. Over the years, I've tested a lot of different headsets and theaters, and, well, you guys have always asked me which ones are my favorites. And, well, quite frankly, I apologize. I've never really given you that answer until today. So sit back, relax, and stay tuned as I go through the top headsets that I have for virtual reality movie watching. Okay, so like I said in the intro over there, guys, I have been searching high and low for a great VR cinema experience for the better part of five years. You know, when we first got our DK1s and DK2s and, you know, I never thought about it until this little program called Rift Max Theater popped up. I think it was one early DK2 days. and. If you weren't around in those times, man, it was just exciting. It was an online movie theater. Everybody could come. They could gather together. I mean, that's literally where some of the first VR podcasts, like Reverend Kyle's show, started. Uh, I think that's where Gunter from Gunter's Universe over in VR Chat got his start as well. So it was great. But... The social aspect was about the best part because those headsets in the early days, they just didn't have the resolution to truly be something that you would enjoy watching a movie on. Well, flash forward a few years and, well, we started getting, you know, the consumer versions of headsets, like the uh, consumer version of the Oculus Rift and the uh, consumer version of the HTC Vive and, you know, being a movie buff, I got excited. I'm like, okay, cool. This is going to be it. This is finally going to be it. I'm finally going to be able to watch movies in virtual reality. And well, then boom, we had a switch from aspheric lenses to Fresnel lenses. And boy, did that screw up movie watching completely. I mean, you know, not only were we still working on low-res screens with lots of SDE, now we had God rays beaming all over the place and smudging off of the screen. It was, it was just heartbreaking. So, flash forward a few more years, and now we still have those dreaded Fresnel lenses. They have not gone away, but luckily we've finally gotten into some headsets that actually have a high enough resolution and a low enough SDE to make movie watching very enjoyable in virtual reality. So tonight I'm going to break down these three right here out of all the headsets I own, which is about 10 now. These three are what I have found to be the best for movie watching. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna kind of take a look at them as like a good, better, best scenario. So starting here at the lower end of the spectrum with the good. So, you know, the Samsung Odyssey Plus came out a couple years ago uh, now, and I'm not gonna lie, it, it definitely has its faults being a Windows Mixed Reality headset, but for cinema watching, this thing actually does the job nicely. Now, why does it do the job nicely? Well, that has to do with the magic that Samsung put in there with the anti-SDE layer. So this one, a little bit higher resolution than most other headsets on the market for its day, but Samsung increased the enjoyment factor by putting in an anti-SDE layer on the screen, which basically blends the area between the pixels and eliminated the SDE. Now, that gave it a really nice smooth image, but it did tend to soften it just a little bit. Now for gameplay, I didn't like that, but for movie watching, for TV watching and in apps like big screen or virtual desktop, it worked phenomenally. And you know, these days at its price point, I'm not gonna lie, this is actually a nice option for those of you who just want a, a kind of what I would call a, a good entry-level VR cinema headset. 
So now, flash forward to last year and HP came to market with the Reverb. And man, I gotta tell you, I just got this. I'm, I'm actually almost like a year late to the party on this one. Um, HP just sent me this one for a review, kind of a, a little uh, preview taste before the G2 comes out. Uh, <laughs> we'll hopefully have some more information on that soon. Uh, but this actually produces a 4K image. That's right, when you put the two eyes together, they combine to form a 4K image. And for the first time, okay, I put this headset on and I was just blown away, just walking around in the cliff house. Everything was so crisp and sharp and clear compared to any other VR headset I had ever seen. Well, obviously the first thing I did is I jumped in a big screen and I fired up a, a 3D movie and wow, I mean, wow. So just like it, this guy right here, it is a Windows Mixed Reality headset, as you can see from the two cameras on the front. That means, once again, tracking, not the best, but when we're watching cinema, when we're watching TV, we don't really have to worry about the controller tracking as much. The headsets, they track just fine. So. Big kudos to HP for finally bringing a headset to the market that kind of gets us to that 4K threshold. I, I, you know, that is, for me, the jumping off point. Now, does that mean that this is going to look as good as a 4K TV? No, absolutely not. Because, well, the one thing that this one doesn't get rid of is the screen door effect. So you still got it, guys. It's there. It's a fine veil, but you can still pretty clearly see it, especially when you're watching movies. So that brings me here. Now, a lot of controversy around the company, a lot of controversy around the headset, but let me tell you, the Pimax 8KX with its dual 4K per eye screens is quite possibly the best headset I have ever seen for watching movies on. I mean, it is just magical. When you jump into something like big screen, it is like with the wide field of view and the super crisp visuals, it is like you are sitting in a movie theater. It blows my mind. So the only drawback for this one I would say is, is that with, a, with Pimax's new modular audio strap, well, the audio is not that great. With both of these, they both have, you know, on-ear headphones they actually sound pretty decent. This one especially, it sounds pretty much just like the original Rift headphones, which in my opinion weren't horrible. They weren't the greatest, but they weren't bad. So hoping to eventually get the deluxe audio strap from Pimax. I know we're all hoping to eventually get the deluxe audio strap from Pimax or pretty much any of the other accessories that you guys are waiting for, but uh, just based on visuals, this is obviously the king. And you know, you got good, better, best. You got lowest price point, mid-tier price point, and premium price point. And I'm gonna throw all the information for all the headsets down in the description, so. All right, I, I guess, you know, it wouldn't be a video on my channel if we didn't jump into something. Obviously, we're talking about movies. I am going to go ahead and just jump into big screen with each one of the headsets and kind of spew a little more thoughts in real time about each one. Now, while I'm in there, guys, I'm not going to play any commercial movies on the screen. I, I just, I, last time I did a, a cinema review, I got a huge copyright strike for that because I played some IMAX intro. Uh, so I'm just probably going to jump in and maybe we'll watch some of my videos from my channel because, well, I kind of own those. So, all right, let's jump in a big screen and let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into each one of the headsets. All right, so here we are in big screen in the uh, Odyssey Plus, which, you know, like I said earlier, is the good of the good, better, best that I showed you. Um, it has been a while since I've been in this headset. It's, it's actually been over there on the, the shelf kind of collecting dust for the better part of a year. 
and I forgot how nice and rich all the colors and the blacks were on these really good Samsung AMOLED screens. So, God, I wish more HMD manufacturers would go back to OLED or AMOLED. I, the LCD just washes everything out in most of the headsets, but eh, that's, a, that's a rant for another video. So anyway, uh, big screen here has grown up quite a bit. Um, there's big screen cinema, big screen TV. Now, like I said in the intro, I, I'm not going to play any commercial content up on this screen because I really don't want to risk a, a, a copyright strike. And <laughs> it's kind of cool to see me in the little box. Hey, um, so we're going to jump into the uh, one of the cinema environments here, and uh, then we'll probably just go ahead and throw some of my own content up on the screen so let's go okay so you know of all games that i've recorded lately there is nothing more cinematic right now than half-life alex so we'll go ahead and use this as our tester footage here so you know right here i gotta say i really like the Samsung Odyssey Plus, and I always have, and, and, and you know, I, I got to take her out more often because this looks rich, it looks colorful, the anti-SDE is no joke, cinema watching is passable in this and it's even better than passable i mean it is mildly enjoyable now you do still have the problems that the odyssey plus has with some some light concentric rings that you can still see if you get the sweet spot just right they kind of kind of blend and you know you do have a mechanical ipd on this one so you can dial it in and, and you can kind of get it to where you don't see them as much but they are always kind of there in the right light circumstances and uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, uh, it's another thing that I wish that HMD manufacturers would have not gone to is the Fresnel lenses. I, I'd really love it if we could get back to aspheric lenses one of these days. But uh, anyway, back to this. Now, the, the image is very clear. Um, you know, like I said, I could definitely see myself watching an entire movie in this headset. And, you know, one thing else that's really good about it is, is if you have not made the jump yet, if you're looking for something to watch movies in, TV in, hell, even play some games in, it's not that bad. It's just got some tracking glitches with the controllers. You know, you can kind of sometimes find these out there for like in the $250 range these days. Uh, so heck of a bargain and a great entry level headset. So, all right, let's go ahead and now jump into the HP Reverb. Okay, so now we're in the HP Reverb and oh, holy hell, I mean, not to diminish the Odyssey Plus in any way, but the minute that you jump into this headset, it just smacks you right in your face how crystal freaking clear everything is. I mean, it is night and day, guys. I, I can read the text on the desktop legibly. I, it, is, it is what I have always wanted VR to look like. Now, with the reverb, there, there's still a few tiny drawbacks. I mean, there is the thinnest veil of screen door effect that you can see when things are contrasting against each other. And, you know, the other thing is, is, you know, I gave props to the Odyssey Plus in the last segment because it was an AMOLED screen and, and the colors were vibrant and then the blacks were deep. Well, this one, it is an LCD screen. Now, it is full stripe RGB, but it it's still... I don't know, it, it just always has that, that LCD glow, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, it dark never seems truly dark. So I, I, gotta, I gotta not knock it because, I mean, it's not horrible and you get used to it really quick and, and the trade-off for the super, super, super clarity here, it, it, I, I'd trade it in a minute. So other than that, um, everything else is great. Um, I, you know, I, I just, I, I can't tell you how much I would love to recommend the reverb right now, but it is kind of, I believe at the end of its life cycle, 
Uh, currently, there have been no price drops on it. I believe it is uh, still $649 if you buy it. And HP has already teased its successor, which is the Reverb G2. Now, we don't have a lot of information on that one just yet. But as you see this, and as I said earlier, that this is another Windows Mixed Reality headset. So if you wanted to double it for, for both movie and TV watching and gaming, you are still gonna suffer a little bit from controller tracking and occlusion uh, because of the two cameras there. But, it, it, you know, if the G2 comes out and it starts forcing the price of this down, I gotta tell you, if, if sheer media consumption is your goal, this is a great headset. Um, also has a little bit better field of view uh, than, the, than the Odyssey Plus. So, you know, we've gone from good to better. Well, now it's time to go to best. All right, last but definitely not least, we are in the upcoming Pimax 8KX. Now, this is a prototype, guys. This, this was a prototype that Pimax allowed me to bring home from CES, so it is not the final version. I mean, there are certain things, you know, like I said in the intro, I was talking about the audio from the uh, modular audio strap here. It, it's not the final strap. That they're, they're retooling the speakers or doing different things like that. I also didn't mention the audio in the other two, but I kind of uh, kind of touched on it in the intro there that, that the audio in both of them are really great. I, the, the Samsung Odyssey Plus has AKG speakers. I, I don't know what kind of speakers there are in the uh, the HP Reverb, but I'm I'm assuming it's 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 similar to what was in the Oculus Rift, uh, the original Oculus Rift, because it just seems identical in almost every way. Actually, if you look at the Reverb. But those guys had their turn, now it's Pimax's turn. So man, let me tell you, in, in, in sheer clarity of image, you just can't beat this headset. It, it is native 4K per eye. And obviously one of its advantages is the field of view. So, I mean, like right now, the, the, the screen seems more life-size to me. Like I, like I was actually at the movies and, you know, the theater here seems more life-size to me. Um, the other thing is, is it is LCD. So, you know, the only OLED AMOLED screen that we have talked about tonight is the Odyssey Plus, but for some reason, the LCD, this one also is, I believe, a full stripe RGB. This one pops, and I think I know why. And that's because, unlike anybody else out there, Pimax has the Pi tool, and, and Pi tool allows me to come in here and customize the headset to my liking. I can, I can customize the brightness and the contrast of the screen, and I can get it nicely balanced to where blacks actually look black, colors are popping, so it just looks phenomenal. And, you know, last but definitely not least, there is absolutely no perceivable SDE in this screen whatsoever. I, I mean, it looks like I am at the movies and and that is gold i god i wish i could just you know i know you really haven't even been able to see the differences in the screens obviously you're taking my word for it because to you everything looks the same up there but guys this is it this if you have always wanted to have a vr headset that gives you that i'm at the cinema feeling this is the one uh, I can't stress it enough. I, I have tried pretty much every headset there was for the last five years with the exception of some crazy military stuff. And this is it, guys. This is the one. Now, it ain't cheap, uh, you know, and quite frankly, it's, it's not even really available. They still have to fulfill the ones that backers ordered years and years ago uh, that they've been waiting on. Then they've got to fulfill the people who pre-ordered on the website. So, you know, if you want one of these, you need to get in now. Uh, currently, this one, uh, you know, it is the one I am going to recommend if you have deeper pockets uh, if you are prosumer. Um, 
Other than that, guys, I cannot say enough good things about all three of the headsets that we have seen tonight. So I am going to type all of my thoughts up in the description as I always do. I hope you guys read those. I put actually, actually put some effort into that. It's almost like I'm writing articles back on VR Spies, but I just do it in my comment section in the limited 5,000 words that I have. Um, but uh, yeah, so head down there. I'm going to have links to each headset. If you are interested in finally making the jump and purchasing one of these, uh, you will know where to buy it. And uh, for me, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so, so very much for watching to the end of the video tonight. And if you did, you know that means the world to me. And, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I normally don't throw out these kinds of plugs in my videos, but we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers now, guys. We are getting so close. I, we just had our five-year channel anniversary 10 days ago. I should have probably made a bigger deal out of that. And but now that I am out of work because of the virus, I've got a lot more time on my hands. Obviously, you guys see my contents picking back up, and I really, really want to make a run at this. So help me get to that magical 10,000. You know, if this was your first time coming by the channel, please smash subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified the next time I do something cool in virtual reality. And if you've already done all that and you're a subscriber here already, guys, I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping me grow this channel over the last five years. So, all right, that's it. I'm out. I'm going to actually turn off my content and watch a cool 3D movie. This is Don, signing off.